Okay, well, but here's the thing. Okay, so I know I've been kind of going off on a few tangents and trying to explain some stuff, but let me summarize here what I'm looking at. If you provide a racial, um, you know, we're not trying to divvy up people by races here, but if you do provide a, uh, a context. Now, I went to a religious school called the Maxwell International Baha'i School, and they actually did stress people to learn about their own cultures, and they also stressed people to learn about every other culture and see how their culture uh, provided a unique uh, standpoint or a unique step up in, uh, in, in history. And that's actually what we should be trying to focus on in the, interne in the, uh, in the school system. By providing an international uh, school basis and then trying to explain like, you know, how cultures rooted from where they were to where they are now, and, uh, you know, how even Western culture had some stuff to get, you know, how, how world history had stuff to gain from each, uh, from each distinct culture, you know, by providing that, um, by providing that history and by providing a, uh, um, a basis for it. And then even actually getting students to actively research, not just in this area, but in others, um, you know, by getting them to foster this and get them to stimulate interest, people can see the chain of progression of how human culture developed as a whole. You know, and that's where, and, and I do, I think, uh, I do think that there has been some uh, teaching of more Western-based philosophy, uh, or that, you know, in the process that we have gone to the 20th century level, you know, saying that, yes, we are the best, yes, science and reason are the best, however. However, in the process, I do think that we have forgotten where we came from, and we do need to learn that for a couple of reasons. One of which, because um, we keep talking about, like, oh, it's going to become like the Balkans and the like. Well, how many people actually know the real history of what actually went on in the Balkans in terms of the racial t uh, tendencies and the like? How many people, beyond these simple debates that we hear about on this program, for example, actually know a great deal about this? I mean, like, we just hear these buzzwords and the like, uh, for example, here. But, you know, how many people know this in great detail or know enough about this to be able to learn, say, how we're reapplying this in our own society? Like, you know... Half these comparisons can be made, and people might not even know what the comparisons are, so they just take it from experts and go like, oh, okay, then it must be that, or what have you. Or the people who do know it might have a disagreeing opinion over stuff like this that may be overlooked, or what have you. They're like, because it's a complicated issue, because it's a TV show, um, you know, we might not be able to cover this in as much great detail. So here's my concern about this. Let's provide a much uh, greater introduction to all cultures and provide for people, you know, who are feeling marginalized by their race of their skin or by disability or by something else, you know, provide special accommodations for them in the school system to help them say, okay, your culture is special, but here's the thing. It's not just that it is any more or any less special than anybody else. Let's make this perfectly clear. Your culture is special, uh, you know, has a special contribution to the world culture in the form of this. And your culture then connects with all these other cultures along the way to develop this. You know, and, and, and then we can see, and hopefully in the process, um, people, you know, can then, uh, like, this guy says, like, let's just go and, you know, you should be able to, like, you've seen one uh, group of people jumping up and down, you've seen them all. Yes, there are a lot of pictures of people jumping up and down. However, there are some pictures which are unique to one culture, and there also are some pictures which are unique to other cultures. For example, um, let, me, uh, let me draw a comparison here. Um, the religions of Hinduism and uh, the religions of Hinduism and of uh, Christianity have um, some similarities. They have a trinity. Uh, they have the idea of three gods, uh, one of whom is a creator, the other one of whom is a preserver slash savior figure, you know, promoting compassionate love, and the other one is a destroyer of ignorance and promoter of wisdom. That could be considered like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Does that mean if you've seen one, you've seen them all? Not entirely. There are also some very different uh, correspondings between Hinduism and uh, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism and Christianity. And purely by accident in some cases, they can even be reflective of, a, uh, of the Big Bang Scientific. For example, Carl Sagan pointed out that the Hindu religion, of, out of all of them, purely by accident, actually figured out the right level number of, uh, roughly the right uh, number of years um, uh, for, um, uh, for, human, for the universe's existence. They talk about the universe existing in about two epochs, which is about, uh, and each epoch is about 8.6 billion years. So they were off by about a billion years or two, but the universe is estimated to be between 15 and 17 billion years old. So that's a, uh, an example right there. Here's another one. Hinduism actually does have a quote from the Rig Veda, which says that uh, they, they are the most skeptical religion of the bunch because they even hypothetically say it is possible that maybe not only are men the dream of gods, but gods are the dream of men. Gods are the dreams of men. 
And if that's hypothetical, and because of the fact that they even admit that possibility right in their scriptures, they are some of the most open-minded, agnostic, skeptical people, you know, um, in their, uh, you know, in terms of their religious philosophy. They also believe in reincarnation, which is matter and energy constantly being uh, in existence. And if you look at that as a metaphor, or if you look at that as a metaphor, then it does talk about the law of conservation of energy. If you talk about it in a literal format, then you've got the whole problems about spirituality and testing and all that sort of thing, but that's a realm for parapsychology to research, and still hasn't been researched well enough yet. But you still get the idea. I mean, like, you know, um, depending on how you look at it, sometimes these things can draw interesting comparisons. And they could say, well, you know, like, look, does that make the, uh, the Hinduistic religion true? Not necessarily, but it does say that some of these things were provided in an early context, and if we had had free thinking early on... Now, here's the other thing. Meditation and contemplation and the like, why do you think that some of these ideas might have initially come about? Not necessarily to say the time period, you know, the, the, the 17 billion years. Like, I don't think that that was through any contemplation, you know. But I do think that the idea that, you know, that maybe they're saying that maybe the gods are the dreams of men did come out of their contemplation, um, may, you know, maybe did come out of their contemplation by, um, uh, you know, by meditation and the like. And look at, and let's like uh, take a look at some of the other uh, cultures. We take a look at Aristotle, having been, you know, um, you know, Aristotle's logic haven't been good now, but you know, it, its theory eventually got suppressed by later science and the like. Um, you know, for example, the Church had adopted Aristotelian logic as their science base, and that became later. Um, you know, later Newton took it, and then Einstein and the like, and. You know, I mean, and but the thing is that you know, if we if we if we had even had free inquiry, like all these groups commit, you know, com committed various things to world knowledge, like the Egyptians, like the Mayans, like the uh, Hindus, like the Buddhists, like the you know, they all contributed things which were all very good for our modern day society, which um, later got tossed by the wayside. Some of which have even been tossed by the wayside now, which we overlook in our own uh, scientific mindset. Anyway, here's the thing. Um, so basically, like I said, in summary, um, we need to be able to teach more about these other cultures and uh, you know, and teach about how they contributed to the world and the like and go into greater detail on all this deal or get people to actively research more on it so this way they can better understand uh, both the cultures in their older context and in the cultures now and understand the international, uh, stand, for example, understand the political world we live in. But anyway, that's one of the issues I want to deal with. The second one of which is he's, is his talking about reason-based schools or what have you, and the guy saying that there's no difference between it and faith-based schools. Well, I have a slight problem with that, uh, for example, because of the fact that, again, um, the the problem is that with faith-based schools, you're trying to actually force a religion down to people's throats, you know, say in Christianity or Hinduism or what have you. With a relation based on this, you're trying to give people a, uh, a better understanding of their own culture, and then trying, and what would be a better idea is trying to, under, you know, give them a better understanding of their own culture, and then trying to fit it into the rest of culture. By forgetting one's history, we for, um, by forgetting one's, uh, you know, by not teaching in greater detail people's cultures in general, you know, both of their own cultures and then later of other people's cultures, we end up creating a situation where um, we end up creating a situation where people are um, you know are not necessarily you know are, are doomed to for you know are doomed to repeat history because they forget it I mean look at our political system right now in terms of uh, in terms of oligarchies we had that similar stuff in ancient Greece and look at the sort of oppression it caused but anyway I don't want to go there but you get the idea um, the other issues as well um, are the fact that uh, you know faith-based um, I also think as well, uh, and you know, speaking of teaching of reason and the like, um, we have another issue which is to, which I was plaguing our schools far greater than this, and this is the issue of trying to get intelligent design theory, or na uh, namely cre uh, creationism writ large, back into the science classrooms being taught alongside evolution. This has a major problem with it in the fact that it is a religious-based theory. There is no peer-reviewed literature for it, no um, scientific evidence, no coherent theory of how a creator would have done this. You know, like it's not a scientific uh, theory. You know. Um, in any sense of the word. Now the thing is, um, if they want, if people want to teach logic and the like, I would agree. Let's actually get a philosophy and introduction to critical thinking class mandatorily introduced into every into every high school. I also think that we should have a religious studies class teaching world religions there and there as well, so this way people can understand where religions come in and how religious uh, philosophy and the like, uh, religious thought comes in, and the critical, th you know, so this way people can then compare that to there. And I think that we should also have a science class being taught with, um, where kids are being taught the best as, uh, as to what science actually has to offer. And with this three-pronged uh, approach, students can then have their, uh, their, way, uh, their ways in terms of religion, philosophy, and science all compartmentalized. Then they can take the tools from each and start applying critical thinking to every single one of these points. Hopefully, with any luck, 
uh, you know, by using the tools of critical thinking and science, they could even say debunk religion, or the other way, uh, you know, well, actually, no, not critical thinking and religion debunking science, but you get the idea. But, you know, but, but, but by doing that, you one provides a better uh, context of having more information as to how to know how to debunk religion or how to, you know, understand culture or religion versus one different group. We have a comparative civil, uh, we have a critical thinking, uh, you know, then application to science and all that sort of thing. And so this way we can avoid contradictions on statistics like this. Um, and we should be looking better into whether or not these, uh, this segregation, at least in part, does help these people you know, get better. I mean, like, let's actually take a look at that. Let's take a look at better at why these 40% of students aren't graduating. That sort of thing.